What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanna to talk about the psychology, the mindset behind the trade entry that I took today on Tesla. Do the untrained eye, the entry that I'm gonna talk about in today's video, would look like a bad trade entry, something that is gonna go against you. But to a trader that is focusing on risk to reward setups, this was one of the very few entries that you could have gotten on Tesla that wasn't a chase, that wasn't a momentum type trade, but a good risk to reward entry. This all stems back to looking for solid risk to reward entries on your trades, having a systematic approach to your trading, and really looking for the best setups on an intraday basis, avoiding the noise, avoiding the momentum, avoiding the FOMO, but actually looking for high risk to reward. And that is what I wanna get into in today's video. So let's go ahead and break down this trade from today, really get into the mindset and psychology of it. I hope you guys do enjoy it. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to come to the pre-market live streams every single morning starting at 8 a.m. So we start this trade analysis on the one hour chart on Tesla. This is the reason why I took this trade because of a level that I was watching on the one hour. So let's go ahead and start there. On the one hour chart, we know that Tesla was holding demand around this 205, 206 level. The next level that I was watching on Tesla was this 218 low. Right at this 218 level, we had a bunch of previous lows, support, 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 and support. We had a bunch of previous lows that came in on the market, right? On Tesla, we continue to previously support here. And if we're coming back into that level, if we are breaking above it, I'm looking to see if 218 turns into a support, right? I didn't catch the breakout of 218 because there really wasn't a setup there, but I did catch it back on the retest. So now that we know that that 218 level, where it stems from, let's go ahead and break this down onto the one minute chart. And this is where I took this trade. So once we go to the one minute chart, and we pop on the EMAs, which you guys know I use the 9 EMA and the 40 EMA. Now that the EMAs are on our screen, we can sort of break down exactly where I got this trade. So I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to look at the one minute chart. And we're going to look at primarily just the first few hours of the trading day. And sort of walk through the psychology, the mindset that I had intraday and early morning on Tesla. So I was watching Tesla this morning because one, it was coming out of demand and I thought Tesla could have some upside with a strong NQ or a strong ES. So we did get that early morning. I didn't catch this pullback to the 9 EMA. At this time, I just simply missed it. I was in another trade on AMD, but this was the first pretty good entry here on Tesla. You guys can see a push to the upside, a 9 EMA flag, and a pretty nice move here out of that 9 EMA flag. I did not catch that move. After that move, Tesla was pretty much vertical here. No retests, no pullbacks, no entry points that I really did like. Now, what you guys can see right around this 1040 to 1045, we've got our first deep pullback. So we got above that 218, didn't really like anything here, didn't want to just chase this pretty much straight upside on the one minute chart. And if I go to a larger term time frame, it will be vertically to the upside. So I didn't want to chase this move. I wanted to see where was the first pullback that I could get a good risk to reward entry on Tesla. There will, it will always come guys. It will always be a time intraday that a deeper pullback comes that sets up a good risk to reward entry. It's about the people that are patient. It's about the people that wait for it. It's about the traders that actually wait for their setup to show rather than getting restless, rather than getting FOMO and just chasing one of these entries. Now, let me be clear. Uh, today on Tesla, you could have pretty much gotten at any point. So maybe this isn't the best example. But if you guys trade, you know, I'm not making this up. Many times stocks will reverse intraday. Many times you will chase a stock, chase a trade, and it will reverse on you. So maybe this Tesla setup is not the perfect example, but I'm sure you get the idea of what I'm sort of getting across here. Not chasing these moves, waiting for that first pullback, waiting for that first real setup on the market. So what we can see is that around 218, we got that breakout. We got the break of 218, and right here, we had a three-minute pullback, a pretty deep pullback on this move right around 1037, 1038, and 1039. What I started to realize was that it was coming right back to my 218 level that we saw on the hourly chart. And when I see it come back to that hourly chart level and it started to support there, along with that, it was holding the five minute nine EMA, which is your green line on your screen. And if I go to the five minute chart, which is sometimes where I will zoom out to to get an idea of where these are on the five minute, you can see we pulled back on the five minute chart right to the nine EMA and right to that 218 level, that previous level that I marked out on the hourly chart. Now, I really want to get into the psychology, the mindset behind this trade entry, because to a beginner trader, an untrained eye, to someone that you might just put on your chair and say, where do you think I should enter here that hasn't looked at the stock market before, very few traders, very few people would say that right here 
is a good entry on a upside play. Looking for it to come back to the upside, an entry for call options. Most people would not want to take that entry, right? You're getting a three-minute downside move, very aggressive, very quick to the downside. The market was pulling back at that time as well. So not many would want to go ahead and take an entry here. But what we can see at this point, we had the previous hold at 218. We had the five-minute 9 EMA, and we have that clear 218 level. We have a psychological level where it previously held at 218, setting up a good trade risk to reward, right? If you were to get in here at this 218, believing that that demand holds once again, believing that that EMA holds on the five-minute chart, you can set up a good risk to reward. Your risk is that it breaks back below 218. Your reward is if we get continuation to the upside, which we saw for most of the morning on the market. So even though that we saw a quick pullback, even though the market re aggressively pulled back to this previous 218 demand level, this actually is where your psychology should be or your mindset should tell you we got my pull. I got my pullback. I got this back to that demand, back to the EMAs. Now I have risk to reward, right? Now I have a potential upside, maybe back to 220, which is the previous high, or I can get stopped out right under 218. If I just was looking for a push back to 220, the previous high, my risk on this trade, if I was to get in right, got in right here around 1041, my risk is down to around two under 218, and my reward is back up to 220. So in this situation, you're looking at about a two to one risk to reward. We'll go ahead and turn this red so we can signify our risk. Here's your risk, right? Let's just say you stop out under 218. There's your risk. There's your reward. So this is actually a good trade setup, even though to an untrained eye, this would not look like somewhere that you'd want to enter in after that deep of a pullback. Now, on top of Tesla pulling back to that 218 previous demand, holding it, as well as the 5-minute 9 EMA, what we can see here on the NASDAQ, which is what I watch with my individual stock trades, we can see that we got a pullback to the channel low on uh, NASDAQ as well. So we started to see at, nine, not, or at 1041, 1042, we started to hold up here at these previous low of debt or the previous channel low. You can see we held it here. We pulled back, held it, pulled back, held it, and we pulled back once again, and we were starting to hold. So at this point on the NASDAQ, as well as on Tesla, buying entries back to the upside here is actually your risk to reward, which you want to get, right? You don't want to be chasing and taking a NASDAQ long up at the highs. You don't want to be chasing this breakout here, even though in this situation it did work. You want to be looking at, okay, where did we hold previously? Where can I try to expect us to hold again? And if I go long down here, my risk to reward to the upside is great because I will stop out very quickly if the NASDAQ does flush below this level. And if it does not flush below that level and we continue higher, my reward is great. So at the same time, Tesla was pulling back to that 218. The NASDAQ was pulling back to that 11600 area and potentially setting up a nice long trade on the NASDAQ as well. So back onto the Tesla one minute chart, you can see I put my entries on the screen. I was getting in here around that 1041, looking to see if I could get this move back to the upside, holding that 218 previous demand right on the hourly chart, holding the five minute nine EMA as well. Along with that, understanding that the NASDAQ was in a strong uptrend early morning and even on a pullback, I want to be looking for, can I take this pullback as an opportunity? Not looking for it as, oh, there's a pullback. I'm no longer interested in playing upside. Is the deeper pullback the opportunity for me to finally get a good risk to reward setup? Now, just because it's a good risk to reward setup doesn't mean it's going to work. But if it's a good risk to reward setup, if it doesn't work, at least you're not losing a significant amount of money. At least you know where your stop loss is. Every trade that we put on in the stock market has an opposite reaction that you do not want to happen. There is a possible outcome in every trade that you take that could go against you. Why not take the entry that limits the possible downside risk? Why not take the entry that looks like if it does go against me, I will not lose a significant amount of money because I'm setting myself up into a high risk to reward setup. Yes, your mind and your psychology and your mindset as a human being will be very hard to overcome in these types of situations. It is very hard to buy Tesla calls when it has pulled back aggressively about $2 a share in three minutes, right? That is difficult to get your head around. I, I totally get that. And a lot of newer traders will get that, but a lot of experienced traders will actually understand that, hey, this is exactly what we're looking for, right? We are looking for these pullbacks, looking for the where the risk to reward sets up in our favor once again, and you need a pullback for that to set up. 
right? If Tesla just continued to rally to the upside, the risk to reward's not there. You basically just have to chase it. We're not looking to chase here, right? So we got a pullback, we got that setup, and even if Tesla did not work out for me here, at least I know my stop is right under 218. I'm getting here around this 218.50. That's where my entry point was. I'm risking about 50 cents on this play. Obviously with options, it's a little bit different, but if we just use the underlying stock, I'm risking about 50 cents on the play to possibly get a move back into 220. That means that I am risking 50 cents to potentially make $1.50. That's about a three to one risk to reward, and that's a setup that I would love to take. Now, the next thing that I wanna go over here is where is the more comfortable entry? Where's the entry that a newer trader would be a little bit more comfortable with, a little bit more you know, willing to take? Now in this situation, again, it would have worked on Tesla because it just continued higher. But if you trade the market, you know that it does not always work out this way. So where's the more comfortable entry on Tesla? Well, most people would probably say the more comfortable entry was around here, around here, maybe around here, right? You got the push, right? You saw it hold and you got the push. Now people are probably a little bit more interested. But what are you against in this situation? You are against a previous high of day. You are against this 220 psych level. You are against the previous rejection point, And you are looking to enter back at this potential rejection point. Why are you more comfortable here than you were back at 218? Well, it's probably because your mindset is not focused around risk to reward. Your mindset is focused around being comfortable. It's around being, you know, feeling good in a trade, feeling like it's a good trade entry. And that's sort of a flip flop where you want to actually be thinking. You want to be thinking, where's my risk to reward? It's down here at 218. If I'm wrong, I get stopped out under 218. If I'm right, I play this back into the highs. The more comfortable entry is your mindset is, okay, we held 218. We got my push. Now I like it for upside. Totally ignoring the fact that we could easily, easily reject this level and come back to 218. Getting in up here at 220, getting up here at the previous double top high a day, you could easily see that thing reverse on you. And where is your trade exit? Your good trade exit here would have to be back below 218 because if you exited before 218, you could easily see this sort of consolidate and continue to move higher. And getting in at 220, right? And having a risk down to 218, that's a two point stop that is much larger and you are risking much more getting in here than you are getting in here at 218. So yeah, it looks better, right? You're more comfortable up here at 220. You like that it pushed back higher. You liked and you're, and you're trying to chase the breakout, but you're actually setting yourself up in a worse situation with a worse risk to reward and you're actually risking more money, right? Down here, maybe your mind tells you it's riskier. Maybe your mind says this doesn't look right, but down here, you're actually risking a smaller amount of money, which is what at the end of the day really matters when it comes to trading. Now, on top of risk to reward and everything that we just talked about, it also helps with the emotions that you have while you're in a trade. Entering down here at 218 and seeing that push to the upside, you scale out of some of your position and now you are in the driver's seat. So in this trade, I was trading this live in the Discord community. We were saying, okay, we got our push. Let's scale out of some here. Let's lock in some profits, create some cash flow, and let's see if we get the breakout. Right now we have the liberty to try to see if this thing breaks out. Now that we've got in here at 218, we've gotten our push, we got the good risk to reward set up, now we have the liberty to wait for the breakout. If I'm entering here around 220, maybe I'm entering at the high of day, I don't have the liberty to wait for the breakout. I need it to happen immediately because if it does not and it's a fake out, I am quickly in the red on this position. But if I'm down, if I'm in down here at 218 and we start to trade back in the high of day, I can scale some off, take some profits, reduce my risk and just sit and watch. If it does break out, great. I'm in down here and I'm starting to get more money in my on my P&L. I'm making more money on the trade. If it rejects, that's OK, too, because I am in down here at 218. Even if it rejects at 220 and starts to move lower, I am still in a profitable position. I have already taken half off my position and really nothing can affect me here if it does reject that 220 previous double top high. So you can sort of see, you can start to get a feeling for that mentality, that trade psychology that I was talking about live with the Discord group in this trade. Where was the quality setup? Where was the risk reward in my favor? Ignoring all the potential outcomes that could happen to me down here and just understanding that this is where your risk to reward is the best, a deeper pullback back to the demand level, five minute nine EMA, getting in here, of course, anything could happen in this trade, right? I could have lost, it could have went ahead and dropped under 218, but at least I'm setting myself up to lose a small amount with the potential profit of a larger amount. 
Every trade could go against you, no matter where you get in, right? No trade on this screen could have, there's there's no trade on this screen, on this Tesla one minute chart that was 100% going to work for you no matter what. So if you are going to enter a trade, understanding that there are two sides of it, the good and the bad, why not enter a trade where the bad side is small and the good side is large, right? Even up here where your mind may have told you, hey, this is a good trade entry and this looks like it's going to break out. Well, actually up here, yes, you are probably correct, but the bad side of this trade is large downside and the good side of this trade could be potentially small upside. In this situation, of course, like I said earlier, not the best example. It was actually a great trade if you just traded the breakout, but you guys know in the market, if you're an experienced trader, you know what I'm getting at here. You could have risked about two points to maybe make 50 cents if this even broke out. You're just getting yourself into a bad risk reward setup, regardless if it worked out or not. I'm sure you guys are familiar with what I'm trying to get across in this psychology type trading video. So guys, I hope you did enjoy the video and found some insight. The one thing that I want you to take away from today's video is that there is a good and a bad reaction to every trade we get into. There is what we want to happen and what we don't want to happen. And when we enter a trade, the part that we don't want to happen, we have to make sure that it is small. We have to make sure that if this goes against me, I'm setting myself up with the good risk to reward. So if the risk comes in and I start to lose money, this is where I'll stop out and this is where I'm going to go ahead and risk it to. We have to make sure that that downside risk is worth it. We have to make sure that the upside reward outweighs that downside risk. And this is usually set up when pullbacks happen, when you come back down to demand levels, when you come back into supply levels, right? Whether you're shorting or you're longing positions, look for those trade entries that set up risk to reward. Every trade you get into can be good or bad. Make sure that when you enter, the good outweighs the bad. And in this situation, it was on Tesla, the 218 hold, the previous demand, the 9 EMA on the five minute, risking about 50 cents to make about 2.5, which is on the underlying stock and options. I walked away with about a $700 gain. In that situation, I was risking about $200. So it was a very nice three to one, a little bit more on that position. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, press the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you guys have any questions, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.